Hello Jennings Geniuses. It's time for Math on the Porch again and today we're going to continue to work with word problems. Today we're going to work with word problems with several numbers and or hidden information. And I want to start out by congratulating all the students who actually completed the challenge. And when I say something's optional, I mean it's optional. It definitely was not required. But for those who completed the tortoise and the hare word problem challenge, jelly beans for you. And next week I'll have a challenge as well. Again, you won't be required to do it. All right. Well, I am not really pleased about teaching word problems without being with you in real time. Because the best thing about learning word problems as a group is that we get to share our approaches to them, the different ways, the different plans we made to solve, and the different ways that we solved. And so in class you would be sharing these and we'd be putting them under the smart camera. Or you might be turning and talking to the person next to you about what you did on your whiteboard. But we look for silver linings. Someday you will be back in school and you will be sharing your learning and your questions and your answers and solutions with your friends in real time. And when we're doing that, it is going to be so totally Let's get started. <clears throat> We're going to start with a word problem about Cameron's family. Read with me. Cameron's family cleaned out all of their drawers. They found 47 black pens and 39 blue pens. They also found six pens in other colors. How many pens did they find in all? Well, first of all, this sounds like some of the drawers at my house. Now I know I see numbers here, but I'm not a number plucker. I want to find out what these numbers mean. I want to understand what I know, make a plan, then solve and check. So this number 47 is actually an adjective describing black pens. This 39 is an adjective describing blue pens because numbers are real things. In this case, the numbers are actual pens. And then this number, 6, is an adjective describing pens in other colors. And then sometimes there will be a clue or several clue words about what the operation is going to be, but not always. Sometimes you'll have to infer that. But in this case, we do see clue words. We see in all. So go ahead and pause the video and solve, and then when we come back, I will work through several different ways you could have approached this problem. All right, many of you, and I'm going to scoot this out of the way, many of you, now that we've learned the algorithm, which is a memorized procedure and series of steps, you may have decided to solve with the algorithm. So there's the 47 black pens, the 30 nine blue pens and the six pens of other colors and the operation was addition. So we add seven plus nine, we get 16 plus six more <clears throat> would be 22. We can only put two ones in the ones column. 20 plus 40 is 60. 60 plus 30 is 92 and you always, always, always write a unit, 92 pens. Now we're going to think back to a method that we learned a while back 
when we were learning two-digit addition and one of the methods we learned was partial sums. So I'm going to write my equation again, 47, 39, and plus 6. And we had a whole huge lesson about equals and equations. When we are adding or subtracting, doing any of these operations <coughs> vertically, you're trying to balance this side of the equal sign, because there's your equal sign, with this side of your equal sign. So if I put all these pins in one side of my pan balance and these pins in the other side, those would be equal. So instead of balancing side to side, we're balancing this way, just as if we turned our pan balance. All right, with partial sums, instead of starting with the ones, you start with the greatest values. So 40 and 30, we're gonna start with that. 40 and 30 is 70. 7 plus 9 is 16, plus 6 is 22. And when I add 70 and 22, I get 92, 92 what? 92 pens. And then, though there are other ways you could do it, I'm going to do, last but not least, some of you may have chosen an open number line. If you chose an open number line, most likely, you started on 47. And you didn't have to write all these numbers because you know what's inside 47. 47's inside 47. And then I know I need to jump 39 for my blue pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump 30. 47, 57, 67, 77. And each of these was a jump of 10. Now I have a choice here. I've jumped 30. I know I need nine more jumps for the ones in this amount, 39, but I also know I need to jump six more ones for the just random colored pens. So instead of making all these millions of jillions of tiny little jumps, I am going to choose, because I'm not a math zombie, I'm going to choose to take the six random pens and add them to the nine pins left over when I was doing my blue pins, just because I decided not to jump those ones quite yet. So six plus nine equals 15. Now I know I just need to jump 15 more. That lets me do a jump of 10 and then just five little jumps instead of all of those little jumps, nine and six. So I'm gonna jump 10 more, 87, and now I've gotta jump the five ones. 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. And this, always the unit, 92 pens. So those are three ways you could have approached and solved that problem. And then the last thing you do is check. And so I asked myself, is it reasonable that 47 plus 39, and I can estimate. I'm gonna round 47 to 50. Let me write that. Let me just erase all this, sorry. All right, I'm going to round the 47 to 50. I'm going to round the 39 to 40. And I'm going to round the 6 to 5. Well, 50 and 40 would be 90, and 5 would be 95. And our answer was 92 pens. So was our answer reasonable? Was it close to the estimate? Yes. So that's how we check. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Read with me. At Splashy Waves Water Park, it takes Lila three minutes to climb to the top of the slide. It takes her one minute to slide down and get out of the pool. The slide closes in 20 minutes. How many times can Lila slide before closing time? So let's understand what we know, and then we can make a plan. We're going to underline that she takes three minutes to climb. So this three is an adjective which describes climbing minutes takes her one minute to slide. So this number is an adjective that describes sliding minutes. The slide closes in 20 minutes. 
this number represents how much time she's got to squeeze in as many slides as possible. So even though this represents minutes and this represents minutes and this represents minutes, these minutes are all different activities. Climbing minutes, sliding minutes, and getting out of the pool. And this is how long until they close the slide. Well, let's make a plan. I could take my 20 minutes and I could start trying to cram in as many threes and ones as I can. 20 minutes and I've got all these three minuteses and I've got all these one minuteses. A number plucker would do it that way. But let's think about it. Lila has to do both things to slide. She has to climb and slide and get out before she can start the next round of sliding. So we're not really supposed to be finding out how many times she can slide before closing, but how many times she can do the complete task. So the complete task is three climbing minutes plus one sliding minutes. So really, each turn on the slide takes four minutes because you have to climb to slide. So pause the video and you're solving to find out how many times can Lila do this complete task in the 20 minutes she's got left before closing time. All right, well, let's look at that together. You may have solved it in one of many ways. Um, some of you may have made a drawing, and that's something that we've done before. Not really actually drawing the slide and Lila, though that would be fun. That would be a huge complete waste of time because we've talked about when you're making a drawing or a sketch for math, you are not making it for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. You're making it so you can solve a problem efficiently. So when I thought to myself about making a drawing, I just made a circle with a four in it. That represents one complete slide for Lila. And I just started writing down fours. There's another complete slide, four and four is eight. I'm counting by fours. 12, 16, 20. So that was 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Now, this is what a number plucker would do. They would go, whoops, I got my answer. She can do it 20 times. She cannot do it 20 times. That's not reasonable. No, this 20 represents the minutes till the place closes. The fours represent slides, but the circles represent the number of turns that Lila can have. So how many turns can she have? One, two, three, four, five. So we could say she could do five more slides. All right, sometimes, and look at the title of the lesson again. It says word problems with several numbers, which we've just done with Cameron's family and the pins and Lila and the slide. But sometimes, oh, and last time we did word problems where you don't have enough information and you can't solve unless you seek more information from somebody. But sometimes there will be word problems where numbers might be hidden. And for those types of word problems, you have to do a little investigating. Ah! All right, let's look at this word problem about Simone and Ellery. So let's read together. Simone spends four dimes on a pencil sharpener. Ellery buys a cat eye marble for five nickels. How much money did they spend? Well, let's understand what we know. Simone spent four dimes. Ellery spent five nickels. And they're asking how much money did they spend? So how much, you decide what operation they're asking you. And you decide what unit you're gonna use for your solution. So go ahead and solve this. Pause the video and solve. 
and we'll look at some different ways to you may have approached it. All right. You may say, I don't see, I don't know what you're talking about, Ms. Jennings, hidden information. Well, they don't ask us, the, the question is not asking you how many coins did they use. That is not what it's asking. It's asking how much money. So the hidden information, there's a number hidden inside the word dimes. And there's a number hidden inside the word nickels. To solve this problem, you have to already know the value of those things. So what number is hiding inside of a dime? It's 10 cents. And what number is hiding inside of a nickel? It's 5 cents. So in order to solve this problem, you had to add up the sum of the money inside of Simone's four dimes and the sum of the money inside of Ellery's five nickels. And then you could get an answer in money instead of number of coins. Now you know darn well a math zombie would have written four plus five equals nine. This person, together they spent nine monies. What? That makes no sense. All right, so we're going to do it the proper way. So we added Simone, four dimes. We know that would be 40 cents. And Ellery, five nickels. I can count by fives five times and find out the value of five nickels. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So he spent 25 cents for his marble, which he's probably going to use on his really cool marble run. And we can use the algorithm. Zero plus five is five. 40 plus 20 is 60, and so the answer would be 65 cents, or you could have written it this way, like that. You could have, or you could have written it this way. So let's move on to our next problem. And just to make this extra super fun, there's a cold front coming through and the wind is starting to blow and the radar says I have very little time to finish this lesson. So let me weight down all these papers. I'm telling you I'm really tired of distance learning. All right, let's look. I'm racing against the storm to finish this lesson. Let's read about Case and Katrina. Read with me. And I'm going to weight this down with my handy dandy jelly bean. Case ate a foot-long hot dog at the fair. Katrina ate a regular six-inch hot dog. How many inches of hot dogs did they eat in total? Now, a codfish, as Mary Poppins said, would say, I don't know what I can do. I'm either supposed to plus or subtract, but there's only one number in this problem. There's only a six. Well, I can't do this when I haven't been taught how to do this if there's only one number. Well, remember, we're talking about problems with hidden information. Where is another number hidden in this problem? Right, there's a number hidden inside of a foot. What number is hidden in there? Well, we know Katrina's hot dog was six inches long, and we know the, that the unit of a foot contains 12 inches. So now we've got numbers we can add because they want us to give the answer in inches. There's the unit. Go ahead and solve. Now that was really quite easy, wasn't it? Once you knew where the hidden number was because it was just 12 plus six equals 18 inches. Or you could say 18 inches of hot dog. All right, let's move on really fast before this storm comes. All right. They're going to be getting a little more complex. We have two more to go. We're going to read about Ethan with jelly beans weighting it down. And let's read together. Oh, one more because the wind is picking up. Ethan's summer vacation is 10 weeks and three days long. 
that is a nice long summer vacation. How many days is that in all? So let's understand and make a plan. They wish he gets 10 weeks off plus three extra days. And the problem is asking us how many days in all, there's a clue to the operation. And they, there's even a clue as to the unit they're asking for. How many days? So go ahead and think about where is the hidden number in this problem? Because you know a math zombie would write 10 plus 3 equals 13 days. Woo! Ethan gets off of school for 13 days. Poor Ethan! But no, we are not a codfish. So go ahead and pause the video. Find the hidden number and solve. Yes, the hidden number was in the word weeks. We know in a week there are seven days. So if we have seven days in a week and we have 10 weeks, we could count by sevens 10 times, but we know seven times 10 is gonna be 70. So he's got 70 days off with, that's hiding inside of the 10 weeks. He has three days in addition to that. So he has 73 days off and thumbs up if you remember to write the unit. Good job. All right, last one. Woohoo! We're going to beat the storm. All right, here's the final problem. It is about Noah. Noah ate two strawberries a day for two weeks. How many did he eat in all? What do we know about Noah? We know he ate two strawberries per day. And for how long did he do this? He did this for two weeks. Now think about where there's a hidden number in this problem and pause the video and solve. You could have solved this in many ways. You could have said two strawberries a day for two weeks. Well, two weeks, how many days are in two weeks? Inside of one week, there's seven days. Inside of two weeks, there's 14 days. And he ate two strawberries on each of those days. So I could do 14 plus another 14 because he ate two a day for 14 days. So this would be the first week's strawberries and this is the second week's strawberries and I would know that he ate 28. Another way you could have solved it is 14 strawberry, I'm sorry, 14 days in two weeks times two strawberries a day because he ate two strawberries 14 times. 14 times two would be 28. And of course, you had to write a unit. Now, the last thing I'm going to finish with quickly is we have been talking for days about the fact that knowing what, knowing, getting a page of digits with an operation sign and doing computation and getting 100% is only part of the math. We have talked and talked and talked about problem solving. But I know you're an awesome problem solving. There is a part of the math that I realized after our last lesson I had forgotten to emphasize. Even though computation is, just, if you can do computation, that doesn't mean you know the math. It means you know how to do things with digits. But there's so there's a part of computation that's really important and that I think I failed to mention and that is that you must memorize your addition facts to 20. You need to be able to do those quickly off the top of your head. Otherwise, all the time that you should be spending on strategies, you're going to be spending with your tongue sticking out the side of your mouth while you count and that's that is not efficient and so to be we need to solve accurately and efficiently and if you're still counting that's not efficient and here's some extra extra breaking news for you you must 
memorize your multiplication tables in second grade. I'm just going to put times tables. There's no way around it, friends. And this was the hard this is the hardest part of math for me. I know myself. I am not a good memorizer. So go ahead and get a jump on that. If you already know your addition facts to 20, you don't memorize subtraction facts. Why? Because they're inverse operations. Then start working on your multiplication tables for third grade. And that way you can just take off like a shot when school starts. Um, and you won't be spending all of your time trying to do repeated addition. Because repeated addition will work if I have to do five times five and I haven't memorized it. I'm going to have to go five, ten, fifteen, twenty. But the person who knows it is going to be able to, bam, write the answers. If I do 8 times 4, somebody who hasn't memorized is going to have to say 8 plus 8, 16 plus 8, 24 plus 8. There, it's going to take them forever. So just take this with you and you know yourself. Start working on memorizing what you haven't yet memorized. I'll see you next time. And there will be some problems attached today. See you next time.